Hi, welcome to Premium Builds, I'm John. In this video, we're gonna take you through our recommendations for the best Intel Z690 motherboards. Intel's 12th generation of CPUs have shown themselves to be versatile and fantastic performers. So far, they've released the i5, i7, and i9K variant CPUs, and to get the most out of them, you'll want to pair them with the Z690 motherboard. These motherboards are full-featured and allow overclocking, but they are pretty expensive. We've taken an in-depth look at the options available to you to simplify your decision-making process as you plan your next PC build. We've got our own Intel i7-12700K test bench system and a couple of boards on hand that we've used to inform our assessment. First up, let's cover a couple of the considerations you'll need to make as you make your choice. One of the first decisions you need to make when you're looking at uh, buying a 12th generation CPU is what RAM you're going to pair with it. Whilst the older Lake CPUs themselves can use either DDR4 or DDR5 specification RAM, the motherboard is what dictates that choice and they're not interchangeable. Your motherboard choice therefore dictates the RAM that you need to buy. DDR5 is the latest specification and boasts impressive headline speeds, but in fact there's a lot more to RAM performance than the advertised speed in megahertz. Whilst DDR5 has an edge in bandwidth, good DDR4 kits still perform the same or even better, particularly in games due to lower latencies. DDR5 is also very hard to find and currently very expensive. Whilst we expect DDR5 to develop into the standard option over the next year or so, particularly with AMD's next generation Ryzen CPUs using it as well, right now DDR4 is the sensible option for building a 12th generation Intel-based PC. If cost is no object and you want to use RAM with the best possible performance in particularly memory-heavy tasks, then DDR5 may be the better option for you, but we expect the situation to improve as DDR5 kits become more available and speeds and specification increase. So if you buy now, you may find that the cheaper, better kits are available soon and you end up with a bit of buyer's remorse. What you find in the motherboard market at the moment is that the lower end boards tend to offer a DDR4 so that they retain their uh, value proposition on the market, whereas the high end boards are DDR5 specification, but those boards are already perhaps three to $400 or more, and then you're looking at at least another three to $400 or even more for a DDR5 RAM kit at the moment. And in our mind, that value just isn't made out and it's not worthwhile spending that money for what are really very marginal improvements in performance and only in very specific situations. Therefore, with DDR5 RAM being so expensive and hard to find at the moment, we'd advise that a sensible build around a 12th generation CPU at the moment uses DDR4 RAM. Something around 3600 MHz CL16 or better specification will get you the bulk of performance on offer without breaking the bank. You can check out more in-depth information on the impact of memory speeds on Alder Lake in our companion video, so please click like and subscribe and you'll get a notification when that video goes live. We've done an awful lot more benchmarking and testing to really dig into what makes this platform tick in terms of memory specification. The other thing that you want to look into when you're choosing a motherboard is the features that it offers to you. Luckily, Z690 is actually a very high base specification across the board. One of the first things you want to consider is the VRM performance of the motherboard. Voltage delivery is an important consideration for Intel CPUs which remain relatively power hungry. However, Z690 boards across the board have very strong specification in this area, and it's been shown that even budget boards like the Asus Z690 Prime P aren't overwhelmed by the Intel i9-12900K, they're able to run it at stock settings to full potential. After that, it's just a case of finding a board with the right number of input and output options for you as well as the base specification across Z690 boards are all very similar. Consider if you want Wi-Fi inbuilt, how many USB ports you're likely to need and what speed they should be, and how many M.2 and PCIe slots you require. All of our recommended motherboards combine rock-solid specification with a good feature set at the price, but uh, across the range of Z690 it's actually pretty good, and uh, if you do find a board that's cheaper or that you like more, Double check that specification, but there are no bad boards out there, just overpriced boards really. Make sure it does everything you need and you can buy it with confidence. So let's get in and have a look at our recommendations for Z690 motherboards. Best budget board, the MSI Pro Z690A DDR4. If you're looking for a board that just works and aren't worried about bells and whistles, the Z690A is a strong option. This ATX board boasts a strong feature set and good connectivity. There's four M.2 slots, including three that support PCIe 4.0, six SATA ports, and three full-length PCIe slots with the primary slot supporting PCIe 5.0. Networking options include a 2.5 gigabit LAN port, and there's a version with an inbuilt Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth. 
The VRM is strong with a 14 phase design and good heat sinking, and this board will happily support even the most demanding Alder Lake CPUs. There's a good range of fan headers, including AIO pump headers, USB 3.2 Gen 2 front panel header, and some troubleshooting LEDs to help guide setup. What this board lacks is largely aesthetic, with MSI's Pro lineup focusing on business like functionality. There's no RGB on the board, although it has the standard 5V and 12V RGB headers to connect RGB devices to. It has the relatively basic ALC897 Realtek codec chip, which works, but it won't shine in fidelity or features, and we'd expect better on a $200 motherboard. Overall, it's hard to imagine any normal use that this board doesn't cater to, and with keen pricing and DDR5 and Wi-Fi enabled options, it covers all the bases in a great value package. Just make sure you do buy that right model, the DDR4 or the DDR5, for your chosen RAM. You can also consider the joint best value board, the Gigabyte Gaming X DDR4. If you're looking for a bit more visual flair or better audio, the Gigabyte Gaming X covers those bases. The core specification is still strong with four M.2 slots, plenty of fan editors, and a strong VRM configuration. It also has the better quality ALC1220 audio codec. Just be aware that the rear audio output has been cut back to just three connections. Make sure that's sufficient for your needs. Early boards had some difficulties with the early BIOSes, but there's an included Q flash function to ensure you can always flash a new BIOS direct from USB. Overall, at about $200, this board is a great deal. Best all round, we're giving that to the MSI Tomahawk Wi-Fi DDR4. The MSI Tomahawk brand has long since represented great value, sometimes at the expense of features, but the Z690 DDR4 Tomahawk hits the sweet spot offering of both. This board defines the mid-range of the Z690 series and builds on the Z690 chipsets in any strength with well-judged features and no fluff. The VRM specification is strong with 16 phase 70 amp power configuration supplying the CPU core and extensive heat sinking. There's eight fan and pump headers in total giving ample flexibility for complex cooling solutions. Whilst the board is discreet with no inbuilt RGB, there's RGB and ARGB headers to allow synchronized control of your choice of RGB elements. PCIe configuration is solid with three full length PCIe slots with the primary one being PCIe 5.0 times 16 and the others being PCIe 3.0 X4 and X1. An additional X1 slot allows for small add-in cards. Storage is handled with four M.2 slots Three are PCIe 4.0 and one is PCIe 3.0, and there are six SATA ports. The rear panel is comprehensive with seven USB-A ports, three of them being 10 gigabits per second, and one USB-C connector. Networking is solid if unremarkable, with Wi-Fi 6, an inbuilt 2.5 gigabit Intel LAN. Audio is a standout feature at this price point with high-end ALC4080 codec and a full suite of rear panel connectors. Given this board can use existing DDR4 RAM kits and covers pretty much every conceivable option for a mid-range system involving say the i7-12700K, this board takes our recommendation in the mid-range and defines the mid-range of DDR4 Z690 motherboards at about the $300 price point. We'd just be wary of any pricing higher than that, it starts to feel a bit expensive once you get past $300. If you want a slightly better looking board, with some RGB and more heat sinking, there's the MSI Gaming Edge Z690. It has a very similar feature set, just a couple of slightly faster USB ports, but a slightly more aesthetic flair, including RGB, and it's maybe around $20 more than this board, so a viable upgrade if you want something that just looks a little bit better. I'm a little bit wary of gaming branding since any motherboard does the job, but for our best gaming motherboard, we've picked the Asus Tough Gaming DDR4 Z690. There's no doubt this ATX board from Asus has a lot to offer. There's strong power delivery setup with 14 phase VRM to the CPU core and hefty heat sinking. There's seven fan and AIO pump headers in total allowing for extensive cooling setups. The DDR4 models means you can get gaming straight away without overspending on hard to find DDR5 RAM. There's four PCIe 4.0 M.2 slots allowing you to take full advantage of affordable high capacity NVMe drives for reduced loading times, whilst four SATA ports provide extended storage options. USB connectivity is good with eight rear USB ports, seven USB-A and one USB-C. Also on the rear panel is Wi-Fi, 2.5 gigabit Ethernet LAN, and a full set of audio outputs including optical output. The aesthetics are a strong point with striking heatsink design and attractive RGB highlights. The main compromise is four SATA ports, not six, but since more storage is moving to M.2 drives, that's not an issue for most people. This board represents a great option for gamers looking to get the most from an i5-12600K for example. There's a few good options in the Z690 lineup for white themed builds. First of all, for a good white theme build board without breaking the bank, there's the Gigabyte Z690 Aero G. The Aero G is a creator focused board, but you may find the angular silver aluminium aesthetic fits well with your perfect looking build. There's DDR4 and DDR5 versions of the board available. All have a strong VRM arrangement, great connectivity with built-in Wi-Fi 6, numerous fast ports at the rear I.O., 2.5 gigabit LAN, and a high quality ALC4080 codec. It also has four M.2 slots. 
Overall, this is a great looking board with plenty of functionality, and it's our pick for the best balance of looks and features for white or silver highlighted builds without breaking the bank. At the higher end, there's also the MSI Z690 Force. This $400 board is a copy of the MSI MPG Carbon in white. It's a full featured board with a white design accent, but it's otherwise identical to the MSI Carbon and unfortunately that means it's restricted to DDR5 RAM only. If the budget is a little tighter, then you could also opt for the Asus Z690 Prime P. This board does compromise a little on specification, mainly in just having three M.2 slots, four SATA ports, and a relatively basic rear I.O. It doesn't compromise on the important areas though, with a VRM capable of running even a 12900K, and it does have striking silver heat sinks. So if you want a board that looks great in a white case at a lower price, this board could be right for you and it's under $200. Our recommendation for creators looking to get the most out of the i9-12900K is the Gigabyte Aero D. If you want to take advantage of the 12th generation's capability and creative applications, this motherboard is the perfect basis for it. Whether you're rendering 3D art or creating high quality audio or visual content, this board has several unique features that set it apart. First, it's one of few boards to include an integrated Thunderbolt for connectivity. With two Thunderbolt connectors on the rear panel, you can hook up very high speed drives for rapid data ingest, or monitors for flexible and high quality display output. This versatile high bandwidth connection means you need to spend less time waiting and you can spend more time creating. Secondly, this is one of a few boards with 10 gigabit ethernet LAN on board. So you can hook this system into a high speed network and move large files with ease. If you don't need these specific features, then we'd recommend one of the other more basic and cheaper boards in this review. The rest of the specification is very similar and they'll all do a fine job for you. However, on this board, the VRM is high end and has extensive heat sinking to support a 12900K even under extended high load situations. Audio is provided by the high end ALC4080 codec on the rear panel, but note that the front panel output is driven by a basic ALC897 codec. The rear panel comprises of high speed Wi Fi, two LAN sockets, 2.5 gigabit and 10 gigabit Ethernet LAN, six USB 3.2 Type A connectors, and those two high speed Thunderbolt 4 ports. Audio out is is just line out and mic input. So ensure that it meets your needs or that you have a plan for an alternative audio interface. This board represents the best option for a high-end creator's PC with its unique feature set, slick looks and wide ranging functionality. However, the basic specification of Z690 boards is high enough that if Thunderbolt isn't a requirement for your workflow, you can use any of our recommendations without limiting the 12900K's performance or functionality. Taking a look at the high end, let's look at the MSI Z690 Carbon Wi-Fi and see what a board priced at around $400 gets you for the money. For that extra spend, you get an additional M.2 slot with five in total, slightly more USB ports, a postcode display, and a stronger VRM configuration than the MSI Gaming Edge, for example. These improvements are marginal, and as we move into the high-end boards, we tend to find that only DDR5 versions exist, locking you into perhaps $300 or more in RAM expenditure. Overall then, we're really showcasing this board more as a point of interest rather than a full recommendation. We do have one on hand, but we haven't been able to test it thoroughly due to lack of DDR5 RAM availability. This is a well-made and full-features board, but it's one that seems hard to justify at the price, as the features are available elsewhere on DDR4 boards at $100 or more saving. Another board that's available at the $400 price point, another board that's available at the $400 price point is the Asus Z690F Gaming. Asus's ROG lineup have long been a favourite, with a stylized look and overclocking-oriented features. The Asus Z690F Gaming sits at this $400 price point, so I think it's worth looking at the board critically. And really, there's very little that shines over a $300 offering. It has just four M.2 slots, two full-length PCIe slots, and few other standout features. Combined with DDR5 RAM, this board costs $300 more than an equivalent MSI Tomahawk setup for no additional performance or features for the vast majority of users. In reality then, we think it's wise to look carefully at specification before going with brand loyalty for Z690 boards on the whole. And for the interest of it, let's go and look at the true high end. There are obviously a number of really high end boards out there designed to partner the i9-12900K and get the most out of it and your wallet. Whilst these boards boast impressive looks, I'm not really sold on any of them in terms of value. You only need to explore the $500 and up market if you're a serious overclocker, don't mind DDR5 pricing, and budget really isn't in your vocabulary. Whilst there are some stunning looking boards available, we hesitate to recommend any of them when $400 gets you all you could reasonably want from this platform, and you can take even the most demanding CPU to its limits of performance. We'd only consider boards such as the Aura's Tachyon, MSI Unify X, or Asus Maximus Hero, if you're a dedicated overclocker and your value from the board comes from the infinite number of options they provide for tweaking your CPU for maximum performance. Finally, we'll take a quick look at the ITX boards on offer. This is a very limited market with just five boards available at present. If you're on a budget, then the only option really is the ASRock's catchily titled Z690M-ITX-AC. 
This is one of just two currently available boards that use DDR4 RAM, and sadly it does miss out on many of the features that make Z690 such a strong platform. It has a weaker VRM specification, and while you'll get away with the i5-12600K or the i7-12700K on it, I wouldn't recommend it and it certainly won't overclock. The audio chip is the budget ALC897 codec, and there's just two M.2 slots. Rear I.O. connectivity is acceptable. In short, this is a board of last resort if you absolutely need to get a 12th gen CPU into a cost-effective mini-ITX platform for some reason. If you're considering this board, we'd recommend a short wait for the i5-12400 and B660 motherboard options. They're likely to offer a better and more cost-effective solution. As for best all round, we looked a gigabyte with the only other DDR4 board currently available, the Z690i Aorus Ultra. Again, this board lacks many of the features that mark the Z690 chipset out but for an MITX board it's fully featured. It uses the ALC4080 audio codec for high quality output and Wi-Fi and 2.5 gigabit LAN are inbuilt. The VRM is strong with 10 phases and extensive heat sinking as well as a heat pipe. However, there's just two M.2 connectors and four SATA ports. The rear I.O. consists of seven USB-A ports of various speeds and one USB-C. Audio connectivity is limited to a single line out and mic input. This board represents the only current option if the ASRock board doesn't meet your needs, as it's the only other DDR4 board available. Be aware you may need a BIOS update initially to rectify some early BIOS issues with M.2 drives and RAM compatibility on Gigabyte boards. QFlash makes this easy to do from a USB stick. That wraps up our Z690 Roundup, giving you our picks from the current market. As we said at the start of the video, the nice thing about Z690 platform is that it's a very strong base specification. If a motherboard doesn't appear in our list here as a pick, it's not because it's bad, it's simply because it perhaps doesn't shine in either pricing or features compared to the ones we have picked. If you find a board that you like at a good price, there won't be any problems with it and you're free to choose it. We'd just advise you do check those areas we pointed out, that the VRM is up to scratch, that there's the input and output options you need including PCIe slots, and that it's got sufficient storage connectors to run the storage devices you're conceivably going to use in the future. Our main point of caution here really is just to avoid overpaying, whether that's for a board that will only take expensive DDR5 RAM, or one that perhaps at $500 doesn't really offer any features that make it compelling over an option that would be more like $300 or $400, freeing up more budget to spend in other areas of the system. Thanks for watching, please like and subscribe if you found this video helpful. We've got other content around Old the Lake on our channel, including a review of the i7-12700K, and some information about what DDR4 RAM is the best pick to go with these processors and ensure you're getting the most out of them. Please do also check out premiumbuilds.com. We've got loads of information, including component recommendations on there, all of which are aimed at getting you the best possible PC for your money.